Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're road testing the brand new Jackery Solar Generator 2000 Plus. Now this is a 2042 watt hour portable solar generator. And one of the main features that really appealed to me about this is it's got a 3000 watt inverter. And you can pretty much run anything you want while you're out and about. It comes with two 100 watt solar panels that fully integrate into the solar generator itself. It packs a real serious punch, so come along as we show you what it's all about. So for anyone that's not familiar with the Jackery brand, they're a Californian based company and they've been around since around 2012. In 2016, they actually released the first portable power bank and followed that up two years later with the first portable solar panels. So they're actually a fairly well known brand, particularly over in the US where they've been around for over 11 years and they've produced over 3 million units. Now Jackery have just released their plus range, which you can see here, and that coincides with them entering the Australian market. So they've got a number of products they've released onto the Australian market, and the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus sits pretty much right at the top of their product range. The big change here is that they now have LiPo 4 or LFP battery packs inside them. So they're a lot safer, they're a lot more efficient, and they'll last a lot longer getting up to 4,000 cycles before the capacity drops down to 70%. Now you think 4,000 cycles isn't all that much, but that actually gives these a lifespan of 10 years. So 10 years, that 10 years is based on drawing this down, charging it back up, every day for the next 10 years will pretty much get you through those 4,000 cycles. So I think these units will actually be defunct before the battery packs degrade down, and even then, they're only degrading down to that 70%. So the LiPo 4 is a really, really big feature of the Plus range, and I would certainly go this over a Pro, even though they're very slightly heavier, they're a lot more efficient and safer because of the battery makeup. Jackery has actually been the first to get a carbon neutral footprint under TUV and the SUD, which is a really big achievement and something that I'm sure a lot of the other brands are looking at as well. And of course, all these products are extremely easy to use and safe. They've got a really intelligent BMS system built in with all the safeguards and overprotection systems, including cutoffs. There's a lot of ventilation, there's inbuilt and automatic fans that cut in and out as the system needs to, to cool itself down. And of course, those LFP battery packs make it extremely safe. So it ticks all those boxes from a sustainability, safety, and usability point of view. But now let's get into the nitty gritty of what this is all about. So as I said at the beginning, this is the Jackery Solar Generator 2000 Plus, and it comprises of a couple of components. The primary is the Explorer 2000 Plus you see here. And then for the solar generator component, you get two of these Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt solar panels. Now I was a little bit concerned about the 100 watt because that's a fairly big battery to charge up. But I have been amazed by these panels. They are extremely efficient, down to the point where they're actually outputting more than 100 watts. So two of these panels put together, feeding into the back of the unit, I've seen over 220 watts going in. So that is actually pretty incredible. And you can actually build on the solar generator side by optioning it up with two, four, or six Solar Saga 100 watt solar panels. Now over in the States, they also have a Solar Saga 200 watt. I'd be really interested if that is coming into Australia because to me, that would actually be a lot more efficient than scattering a whole heap of panels around. So Jackery, if you do have some 200 watt panels coming in, 
I'd be more than happy to test them because I've been blown away by these panels. They really are impressive. And I'll touch on them now before we get into the unit because they're actually a really nice, neat little package. As you can see, they're quite compact. They fold in half so you don't need to muck around with multiple folds and trying to get it all to pack down all nice and neat that you get with a lot of your solar blankets. They have these Velcro legs that come in and out, so they're the stands for the unit. But the real funky thing about this is that they actually sandwich together by way of magnets. So you simply close it up and it holds itself together. There's no Velcro taping or anything to hold it all together when you're moving around and transporting it. And then it's got this really fantastic carry handle. So you simply pick it up, move it around, and it's no hassle at all. On the other rear side, you've got the second fold-out leg. And we'll do a little bit of B-roll here to show you how it really looks. And this little pouch here. You open this up, and inside, you have your solar cable that comes out and plugs directly into the back of the unit itself. Now, the other interesting feature with this is that it also has USB outlets on it. So you've got a USB-A and a USB-C. So you can directly charge your phones, camera gear, or anything from these panels directly without having to use the unit itself. So there's a lot of flexibility in this ecosystem they've created and it's really quite good. So with the 2000 Plus you get this really handy little carry pouch that all your cables go into and accessories and bits and bobs to keep it all nice and tidy. It's got the Jackery branding on it and I think this is a really nice little touch so you don't lose everything. With everything else I've got, I've actually got them in bags as well. So it's great that a company's actually thought about this. You simply unzip it and inside you have these bright orange cables. So here's your AC cable. And again, it's got this great double-sided Velcro strap so you can keep it all nice and neat. You don't have to think about it. Doesn't have anything in between. It's just a normal straight cord. And then a standard three-prong computer monitor style plug that goes into the back of the unit. It's really good and it means if you lose this while you're out and about, which would be incredibly hard given it's a bright orange color, you can easily go down anywhere and buy a standard three-prong style cable to plug the machine in and keep it running while you're out and about. Or you can order one in from their online shop as well. And there's also a number of resellers for the Jackery brand, so you can buy them through retail outlets as well. Also in the pouch, you have your standard 12 volt DC or cigarette style lighter plug that has the generic plug, so you can plug and charge this unit from your vehicle while you're in transit. The 2000 Plus is fully expandable. That's right, fully expandable. You can buy two kilowatt battery packs from Jackery and you can add up to five batteries to expand the capacity of this up to a massive 24 kilowatts. Now what that means, if we spin this around, is that you can build on this as your setup changes. This also goes with the budget. Yes, it's a heavy investment to get into, particularly if you're looking at a really, really big solar system to run like a cabin or something like that. But you can buy this and then gradually add on those battery packs as your finances improve or you've saved up a little bit, you've added a few things in and you need a little bit more battery capacity. It's really impressive what you can do with these solar generators now without any hassle at all because they've built the ecosystems up so they just plug and play and work so well. So anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get into what this unit can really do. Now before we get in too far, let's run through the specs of the unit itself. It measures 47.3 centimetres wide, it's 35.9 centimetres deep, and 37.4 centimetres high. So it's a little bit bulky, but it's not too big given its capacity and what it does for you. It weighs just under 28 kilos, and in my opinion, is the Goldilocks of portable power stations. Given that it's got a really big capacity, of 2000 kilowatts, which equates to roughly 170 amp hour battery storage capacity. But most importantly, it's got that 3000 watt inverter. So a lot of units that are around that 2000 kilowatts, they'll only have a 2000 watt inverter. Yeah, sure, a lot of them do surge a little bit higher, but this is a genuine 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter that has very little noise and will run everything from your laptop, to welders, to microwaves, to coffee machines, pretty much anything you want to throw at it. So we can run some pretty hefty stuff on this all together, which comes in handy if you're trying to do some meal prep. 
No longer do you need to wait so you can cook something on the induction cooker and then something in the air fryer, microwave or something like that. You can actually run multiple appliances all at once. So it means, which we'll demonstrate shortly, I can run the air fryer cooking up some chips, the induction cooker cooking up some bacon. All at once I can be running my cam fridge off the 12 volt outlet over here, charging up my phone on top, maybe some of my camera gear some portable batteries, you name it, it's got the capacity to do all of that. And while you're gonna chew the battery down a little bit, particularly in the morning, you're gonna bump that up really quickly during the day with your solar input using the sun to charge it all back up. So there's a lot of things you can do with these. And I do think they are starting to take the place of a dual battery system in your four wheel drive, ute, camper, or anything like that. Because this is a fully functional, all in one unit that incorporates all your batteries. It's got your DC to DC inverter through the BMS system that runs in it. You've got your really powerful 3000 watt inverter for your output. You've got all your outlets, bits and pieces and stuff like that. And best of all, you can use it at home. You can put it in the back of your vehicle if you're going for a day trip, camping, or you're even using it as a work tool where you're charging and running all your tools off it. You can put it into your caravan or camper trailer. There's so many pros that go with these kind of systems that they're starting to outweigh the fixed negative of having to build something into the tray of your ute and you can't pull that back out. That money you've invested into that is stuck. You have to remember oh, all the stuff that's jammed inside this thing, you just pick it up, carry it around, take it wherever you want. Now while we're talking about moving it around, it's got these really heavy duty grab handles. You can quite easily just pick it up, move it around. It's got the wheels on the side and then just like your suitcase, you've got a handle you pull up and you can carry and move it around. It's dead easy and simple to do, but for the most part, I actually use these handles because it's light enough that you can actually move it around. It's a little bit bulky, but you can lift it up into the back of your vehicle, up onto a table like this. You can pretty much do whatever you want, but the wheels are really handy on flat ground where you just tow it along behind you and take it to wherever you need to go. If you had to take it down to the beach for whatever reason, you obviously could pick it up and two of you could carry this really, really easily down to the beach and you've got a lot of power to use and do whatever you want during the day. If you're doing a party down there, you're doing a party in your backyard, you can take it out, run pretty much whatever you want. And you don't have to worry about cords and leads and everything coming out of your house, your shed. Because I've been using it for things where I'd normally run cords out of the shed here. You just pick this up now, take it out to where you're working and do what you need to do. Bring it back, plug it in, charge it up, and it's ready to go for the next time you want to use it. And so the advantage here with the 2000 plus is that you have a lot of power. So you can run pretty much anything you want, wherever you want. Whether it be out in the outback, down at your favorite little bush camping spot, or down along the coast to cool off on those hot summer months. But before we get into all of this, the huge advantage is obviously the 3000 watt inverter. And that's what makes this a proper and fully fledged solar generator. And best of all, it's all powered by the sun. So let's head outside and I'll show you where it really performs. Because you can use this 2000 plus as a generator to power up your caravan or camper trailer. You simply use your 15 to 10 amp adapter, plug it into your AC outlet, turn it on and you're ready to go. The good thing about this is there's no noise, no smell that you get with a typical petrol generator. You simply plug in your solar panels to top it up during the day and you can quietly replenish all your batteries and not annoy your neighbors, which in effect makes all your 240 volt outlets operational. So now we can flick on our toaster, flick on our coffee machine, cook our toast, brew up a bit of a coffee, all off grid without any drama at all. You can even use a microwave and a number of these appliances all in conjunction, because remember, we've got that really big inverter. The one thing I am interested in is will it run the air conditioner? So let's give that a whirl. Okay, so we've currently got around about 49 watts just being consumed by the caravan itself, but let's give it a whirl. Set on cool for 23 degrees, which is typically what we have it set on. And to be honest, we don't really use it that much, but it's a nice little luxury to have. It's now going into a startup sequence. We're at 310 watts and it's settled in at around about 685 watts. So just under 700 watts. And with that usage, you could expect around about two and a half hours use. So 
Obviously during the day, if you've got some solar to replenish and keep that up, you might actually get away with a neutral draw on the battery, particularly if you can pump around about 700 watts into it. But obviously at night time, you only got a limited use of a few hours just to chill things off a little bit. But me personally, I like just to open everything up and just enjoy the environment you're camping in. But it will run the AC, no problems at all. And based on that, you can still use a few other appliances. But in reality, you don't want to be running this for a long time because you're going to draw your battery down really, really quick. And of course, it also opens up the opportunity for induction cooking, even while off grid, just by plugging in your induction cooker. Now, as per all these units, they're all pretty much the same. You've got your display here, you've got a power button, you've got under this little flap here, your 12 volt DC outlet. Generally, I'd use this 12 volt outlet to run our cam fridge. Down here, you've got four USB outlets, two are 18 watt USB A's, and the bottom two, and I do need to get some proper USB-C cables, are 100 watt max output USB outlets. And I think that's where it's becoming really good because you really quickly charge up your phone, your camera batteries, your drone batteries, anything like that from these USB-C outlets, and they're really, really powerful. And then over here, and I'll say it again, it's got a 3000 watt inverter with three 240 AC outlets that you can plug in all your appliances. It's all nice and simple. The display is really easy to read. It shows your input on one side, your output on the other. In the middle, you've got a, a graphic dial that shows the battery percentage as well as the digital percentage. And it does actually go down in 1% increments. So you can really easily watch how your battery is performing. And you can also run this while you're charging in and powering out. And it, it will show you the inputs and outputs and correlate that into the capacity you've got left as both a percentage and an hour rate as well. But I actually highly recommend you install the Jackery app because from that app, and I'll show you here, you can really easily go through and monitor everything that's happening on this particular unit. So if you open up the Jackery app, you've got the Explorer 2000 Plus, click on that, it's really, really quick. And it comes up with a display showing we're at 72% capacity. The temperature of the unit itself is 30 degrees, which is actually really handy to monitor that and see what's going on, and it's charging. So we're inputting around about 160 watts at the moment, and it'll be fully charged in just over four hours, which is really, really good. And on the panel below, you can actually turn on and off your DC and AC outlets, and it will show you what it's actually outputting as well as a wattage and an hour range. In the panel below, you can actually turn on and off the screen display. So if you go to bed at night and the display's on, you can quickly turn it off through the app. And then you can also set how long it stays on. So it could be two minutes, two hours, and it comes up with that little execution succeeded window, which is really good just to confirm it's all happened. In the top right hand corner, you've got the settings button, and then you've got a menu that you can go through and look at and change a whole heap of other settings. So for example, you can go into the fast charging mode, or the quiet charging mode, and that will actually slow down the charging so the fan doesn't come on as much and doesn't run as hard. And obviously you go through here to upgrade all your firmware. It's got your device specifications, you can change the name. You've got the user manual built in, which is really, really good, so that you can go through and check things over, work out what you need to do while you're out in the bush, and you haven't got the physical manual with you. So the user guide, along with this app actually works together really, really, really well. Now, if we turn the unit around, you see the two wheels on either side here. They're really quite heavy and robust. They don't feel like they're gonna break and fall off. And they've obviously got to carry around a little bit of weight. Here's your handle that you can lift up and down, which is really, really handy. And then on the back, you've got two other panels. On this side, you've got this panel that opens up for all your inputs. You've got your AC input. Down below, you've got two DC inputs. So in the case of just having the two 100 watt solar saga panels, you can plug one in to one side, one into the other. And the only thing about these is they're a fairly specific DC 8020 port. So they're really hard to find adapters if you're looking to adapt, say, an Anderson plug-on to run your third-party panels. Now, that you can run third-party panels with this. Do Jackery recommend it? No but most of us do already have portable panels and it makes sense that you would be able to plug them in to the back of the unit. And it's really good because it's got the two inputs that you can do that. Now, Jackery themselves actually sell a splitter, which I'll show just here. 
You can buy that separately and that allows you to add three panels into each port using their standard ecosystem connectors. So that's how you can do the six Solar Saga panels into the back of this unit. Three on one side, three on the other, but you'd need to buy two of those splitters as well. But let's get into the really exciting thing, which is this second panel over here. This is a DC expansion port. You can buy two kilowatt battery packs from Jackery. They sit on top and they simply plug into this here. So you can expand the capacity of this up to a massive 24 kilowatts. I've been using this for all sorts of things around the house as well. So for example, we've been over doing a little bit of maintenance on our fence. And instead of dragging stuff backwards and forwards and pulling leads out and filling around, I actually set up a little bit of a base using the Jackery 2000 Plus. And it was fantastic because I could plug everything into it. I could charge my drill battery, charge my muff, my phone, so I could stream music. And then it easily ran the drop saw and the palm sander so we could sand down the posts and get them ready for a fresh coat of oil. And it's really so easy that I've actually started washing the car with it as well. Because you just plug the pressure cleaner straight in, give it a quick wash, and then it's just as easy to plug the vacuum cleaner in as well. Again, no cords at all. Just plug it in, vacuum it on the spot. Don't have to park it near the shed, the house, or anything like that. Give it a really nice clean. And now we're back in the shed doing a bit of a torture test. I've got the air fryer here cooking up some fries. I've got the induction cooker over here running at about 1800 watts, cooking up some bacon. Got my phone on charge, we're running the fridge and it's all idling along pretty happily. It goes up and down obviously as the induction cooker goes up and down. We're sitting at 2800 watts and we've consumed around about 30% of our battery capacity. So that's just one thing you want to be mindful of. Particularly, it's raining at the moment here in the shed and it's supposed to be raining for the rest of the week. So if I was doing this and I was camping, I'd probably want to cut it down and use a butane cooker here. But this is a stress test to see what it does. We're running at full capacity for around about 20 minutes to do these chips, what we draw the battery down to. My guess is it's going to be around about 60%, but it can definitely power all this with no dramas at all. Hasn't even kicked up a fuss. Now I've turned my induction cooker off. I've just got the air fryer going. It's got around about nine minutes to go. So I might as well charge up a battery while I'm waiting. So we'll plug that in. The output, it's gone sitting at 1690 watts at the moment. So the air fryer is doing a little bit of work and we're going up to 1730, ran about that. The battery charger doesn't really make that much of a difference. And now the air fryer is just idled down a little bit in its heating cycle. We're sitting at about hundred watts. So let's actually plug in another dual charger and see what it gets up to. Okay, so we'll just unplug the extension cord I've been using to run the induction cooker. This is a cord to the dual charger just over here. Hopefully you can see that. Plug it in. The FRI is kicked back on. So we're sitting at 1712 watts. We're now charging three batteries, running the air fryer, running the fridge, charging my phone. And the air fryer is just kicked off and charging these three batteries, we're sitting at about 175 watts. So again, that's pretty cool. So I've turned the air fryer off now. We're sitting around 60% capacity. We're using 142 watts pretty much to charge the three batteries, but our chips are all nice and brown and we're ready for dinner. So what do you think about that? I'm actually really impressed with this unit. It's a neat design-wise bit of gear. It's robust and it feels like it's going to last a very long time. When Jackery approached me saying they wanted to send me a unit to test, I actually said I want something with a really big inverter because what we've got currently, it's a little bit hard to use and I, I want to have something set up for this little project next year that will give me a lot of grunt. So they've certainly delivered from that point of view and I thank Jackery for sending me this. It will get some really good use over the next couple of years and we'll do a few videos running through that, doing some performance tests, how's it going, and some down the track reviews that you don't normally see. So anyway, I better get going. This video is probably getting incredibly long. I've got to get it out before the Black Friday sales. There'll be a little code down below so you can do that. I'll have an affiliate link if you want to buy one of these. Use that link because that helps us out a little bit as well. And it lets Jackery know that 
you enjoyed the video. I've tried to make it as interesting, short and compact as I can, but going through all the details and geeky stuff I get excited about. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it around to everybody that might be in the market for something like this. Put a few comments below on what you think about these, but I've got to get going. So thanks for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.